Good afternoon and welcome back to our Shared Servers and Outsourcing Week DAC. My name is Sally Fletcher, Head of Online Events for SSON, and I'm delighted to be hosting this session today. Um, so before the break, we had a couple of really interesting topics related to, first of all, self-service automation, and then also going from kind of ad hoc to holistic in creating an enterprise-wide intelligent automation strategy. Now we're zooming in on an even more important topic, and that is P2P, and looking at boosting Heidelberg Cement's P2P cycle. Before I hand over to our speakers for today, just a couple of notices on the console you see before you. Um, so you could zoom in on those slides if you want to see anything closer. Um, but our sponsors and speakers have kindly provided a copy of those slides in the resource center. Um, so you could also just download those. Um, alongside the slides in the resource center, we have a couple of great resources. One is called Tanker Meet Speedboat, and it's about BASF's path to AP automation. There's also a Master Data Management Best Practice book and the Comarch EDI presentation. Um, so be sure to check those out. As usual, our speakers are here live and we would love to interact with you and ask questions and answer questions. So please submit your questions into that Q&A box. I think it's to the left of your screen in the audience. And we've reserved some time at the end for those. So we'll get through as many as possible. And finally, you can also message me in the Q&A if you have any technical problems during the session, and I will get straight back to you and help you out. So we have not one, not two, but three great speakers for this session. First up, uh, ladies first, is Paula Muller. She's an ITIL certified consultant for EDI and MDN solutions at Comarch. She is joined by Dr. Rainer Cech. He's the head of channel management at Insider Technologies. And last but very much not least, we have Anand Singh, the business process manager at Heidelberg Cement. I'm going to hand over to Rainer to lead us in our presentation. Over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Sally, for the uh, introduction. and. Uh, thank you very much also to all of you in the audience for taking the time to participate in this presentation. I hope you will say at the end it was very well invested time. Um, I'd like to give you a brief introduction before I hand over to my colleagues from our business partner, Comarque, and then to the main speaker of today, Anand Singh from the customer Heidelberg Cement. Well, as the title says, uh, the topic today is about purchase to pay automation which definitely is a necessity for uh, any organization and company nowadays. And when you look at the overall P2P process end to end, I guess it's pretty clear that depending on the character and type of the documents and information that need to be processed, you need different technologies and tools. And we learn about that, or what Heidelberg cemented as a presentation by Anand Singh. One, not the only one, but one important component is, of course, artificial intelligence when it comes to transform unstructured documents and information into structured data. And that's actually what Insiders Technologies is standing for. And uh, to give a little bit an overview of what to expect today, I'd like to tell you a little bit very briefly about Insiders Technologies before I hand over to Paula Müller from our business partner, Comarque. And uh, last but not least, uh, we're looking forward to the presentation of Anand Singh from Heidelberg Cement, who will show us how Heidelberg Cement has boosted its P2P cycle. Some of you actually might know Insiders Technology from our participation at earlier SSOM conferences, for instance, in March, together with our customer BISF. The resource center, you have seen the presentation, Tanker Meets Speedboat. So this is about this presentation of last month together with Dr. Oetker on P2P and O2C, order to cash automation. Okay, um, just a few words about Insiders Technology before I hand over to um, Paula Müller from Comarque. Well, uh, our focus is business process automation, AI-based uh, business process automation, and um, AI, so to say, is part of our company DNA. The company Insiders Technology was founded as a spin-off from the DFKI, the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, which is one of the international leading institutions in that field. 
And our company mission has always been to transform AI expertise into real world application and measurable customer benefits. Today, more than 3,000 uh, 3, customers, sorry, uh, from various industries and all five continents are using our software for optimizing the business processes. And uh, a large number of them actually uses our software products for purchase to pay automation and the key product. That's the one that Heidelberg Cement is also using is Smart Invoice. Smart Invoice automates uh, the processing of invoices and the accounts payable process, but the software can also be used for automating uh, the processing of order confirmations or delivery notes, and you will learn more about that later in the presentation by Anan Singh. Well, we are working together with a number of business partners and uh, Kumark is one of our long-term partners with whom we have a very close business relationship. So last transparency on insider technology and what we are doing, the headline of what we are doing is cognitive process automation. And in very simple terms, it means that whenever you have business processes, documents, information, communication items come in, in different forms via different channels and different formats, and our AI-based software uh, generates uh, structured data out of these unstructured documents. And these are the data that are needed in the uh, business processes to automate them to save money and time when processing these documents. And the functionalities uh, that we provide are manifold, just to mention document classification. So the software can decide what kind of document is it. First of all, we have self-learning data extraction, data validation, matching with company data. Uh, we also provide uh, the different VAT compliance checks for the different countries. And uh, these functionalities, of course, are enriched uh, by powerful reporting and BI functionalities. Um, and just one last uh, remark, uh, the functionalities of our intelligence software products can be used either as uh, on-premise uh, for on-premise installations, but also as intelligent cloud services, as in the case of BISF. Well, I mean, regarding the technologies, the methods we are using, we are combining different machine learning, deep learning, and other uh, technologies, but that would be a different presentation, and we don't have the time, because we are looking forward to the presentation of Heidelberg Cement. And at this point, I'd like to hand over to you, Paula, uh, introduce Comarque. Uh, and as I said, Comarque is a long-term business partner of Insiders Technologies, who has integrated our intelligence software products into their overall solution offering. Okay, then, Paula, up to you. Thank you very much, Rainer. So, as stated before, Comarque and Insiders, have been working together for a long time, meaning that we are using the uh, software solutions that Insiders is providing and offer it as either on premises, where we help you with installation, configuration, support, and so on, or we provide software as a service as well as OCR as a service, meaning that you don't have to do anything. We just receive your documents, process them, and you receive a structured file in the end. Um, both our companies are, uh, well, special in that regards that we offer a global presence. We support all countries in the world and um, we uh, use AI in our solution so that we can guarantee the biggest degree of automation. Also, it is very typical that we are flexible and scalable, meaning our solutions are modular. You can choose and pick whatever uh, you desire. And we also offer all kinds of customization. So Kuma has been acting as an EDI integrator for over 20 years now. Uh, uh, if you don't know our company, we are a Polish software provider with 6,500 employees. And every year we exchange about 650 million documents through our EDI platform. So that can concern invoices, uh, orders, order responses, dispatch advices, and so on. And we're offering those services to the clients you can see on the slide in over 60 different countries so far. 
OCR is just one part of our portfolio since as a comma we are trying to offer a very uh, broad field of solutions which fits to every kind of uh, customer. So starting with EDI direct integrations where we just directly connect the system of the sender of a document with the receiver's IT system and uh, act as an operator in between who takes care of format conversions, uh, setting up integrations integrations, onboarding, uh, validating data, and so on. We also have our own Web EDI solution, uh, which is a, a tool for any partners who cannot support EDI direct integrations for whatever reason. Um, so instead, they receive access to a Web EDI portal which works a bit like an email post box and you can uh, receive, create and send documents through this portal. OCR is, is the last part of this portfolio and also in addition to all of these um, solutions we have certain apps like an OCR app in order to capture documents documents uh, with your phone or some uh, proof of delivery app where you can just uh, tell your phone basically which uh, deliveries you are accepting, which goods you are rejecting, for what reasons you can take photos, and the result is a structured file which goes directly into your IT system. So lots of these solutions are developed together with our customers and also our roadmap is um, always being updated it's very innovative uh, since we are taking inspiration from our customers and the market trends as well. So uh, yeah, this portfolio is constantly changing and being added to. What are we doing with Heidelberg Cement? Uh, so we do have some invoicing projects uh, concerning some uh, invoicing regulations and, and mandate mandates in various countries because we also have a legal team which is monitoring and implementing the legal requirements for invoicing in various countries. And uh, additionally, we are processing unstructured documents, meaning paper email documents um, via OCR with using the insider's technology. And in this case, Heidelberg Cement is uh, choosing the on-premises solution, meaning Komar is there to uh, support Heidelberg when it comes to configurations, uh, implementations, new rollouts. So uh, since 2017, we have been um, doing some invoice processing with Heidelberg. And uh, over the years, we have added uh, certain um, parts to the project, like we started uh, extraction, validation, verification of all unstructured documents, including delivery notes. And every year, we have several, several uh, countries which are added to our project. But uh, Anand can tell you more about it because uh, he's responsible for the OCR project at Heidelberg. And um, yeah, I don't want to let you wait anymore. So, Anand, please, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Paula and Raina. Thanks, both of you. Okay, so P2P, purchase to pay. Yeah? We all know that it's a very mature and uh, more or less stabilized process or a stand, stand process throughout the companies. In any company, you name it, and they have a P2P cycle or process. And this cycle uh, consists of, let's say, these standard substreams or sub-processes like uh, having a PREC in place, PO, GR, invoicing, payment, and so on. So that part stays as it is. The key is to find the right uh, piece there, which takes most of the time and most of the value, and is, let's say, not adding any uh, benefits to our, let's say, businesses here. And when we analyze that, okay, so which part to focus here and which part to focus, let's say, first. Of course, invoice automation is the first one, which we are focusing since many years now. But uh, in this further analysis, we saw that uh, GR, so the goods receipt, that area is the real, real offender. And that part is, let's say, the most neglect, neglected part throughout the years because we, we are talking about not, not thousands but millions of documents here. Like in Germany and UK, for our company alone, it's more than 4 million documents that, that we are processing, yeah, and that's a huge chunk. And if we try to focus on that part and try to induce some automation, that will be a real, real benefit. So that was the trigger why we went into that part of the process to, let's say, induce some automation. And this is a system landscape, just to see the whole full picture. 
that where it begins, where it ends. So we have many suppliers which are sending, let's say, documents in multiple formats, like Paula mentioned, it could be IDOC, it could be EDI, XML, paper, you name it, and it's possible. And uh, what was needed was that we have a single gateway, which, uh, let's say, consumes all the, that data and provides a unique format, a single unique format for our further downstream systems, which we have, which we have in place, like SAP and other systems. And that was the key here, to go with the Comart with Insider's tech technique, because uh, the formats were huge. The formats were, were like 10, 20 formats. And it was really hard to, let's say, do that in-house. And it was much, much easier for us as a big company to go for, let's say, external company and take their expertise and do this work, yeah? So that's, again, uh, further, let's say, detail end-to-end -end flow. So what happens is that we are using Comark and Insiders for, let's say, uh, grabbing the data, so grabbing the paper, gra grabbing the PDF, grabbing the XMLs, what type of data they, 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 gra they grab it. And then the idea is to convert that data to an XML file, to a structured data, because when we talk about automation, it can't happen with PDF files, it can't happen with handwritten documents. It, it has to be a structured data like a XML, for example. And so the idea here was to ask Comark insiders to convert that data to XML file, and not just convert that, because whenever we talk about OCR, in the past days, at least uh, two or three years back, when I began this, it was just about grabbing the data, what you have on the on the image, grab, grab the PO number, grab the supplier number, grab the amount, that's it. But there was no validation or verification of that grab data. And that's what is, let's say, the benefit here or the USP of, this, of the process, that whatever data is grabbed is also verified because uh, we are sending our SAP data to Comac and Insiders here because uh, the vendor master data, the PO data. So the data that is sent to the, let's say, in uh, Comac in this case, they actually validate the data and compare if that verified data is equal to the captured data from the document. And if it matches, then we are fine. And then it, then only it goes ahead to the, to the second part of the process. Otherwise, it stays there for manual verification. So that's the key here, to verify and validate the captured data and send that to, let's say, downstream systems like SAP and OpenText. So in, uh, we are using some RPA techniques to post the, let's say, uh, delivery notes via BAPIs. I'll talk about that later in the next slide. And eventually OpenText here for the archiving purpose. So uh, this is a very important part of the process, mobile apps. So uh, what happened, uh, let's say the as is or the was is in this case process was that uh, the guys in the plant, so we have thousands of plants, yeah, we have factories, we are, we are a cement company, as you know, and uh, people were sitting in the plants, trucks used to come and the tr truck driver used to give a paper and then uh, the paper was kept somewhere in the, in the, in the let's say, repository and some, somebody was scanning it sometime and sometime they were using, let's say, uh, MyGo in SAP is, is a transaction to post the GRs in SAP directly manually. And that was the process they followed. It was a very, very manual process. And what we did was we had this app. So we handed this apps to the to, to the guys there that, hey, hey, uh, Mixer XYZ, take a picture of the delivery note and you're done. You just need to take a picture and send that to the right address. By address, I mean the the plant email address. So that's how we have designed the process that every plant has a dedicated email address. A user can send that to multiple plants for sure. In this example that you see on my screen, it's one plant here, one email address. So the picture, yeah, the PDF goes to this email address, yeah, and that's it. The guy's job is done in that that point in time, and then uh, he doesn't need to go to SAP to do or post the GR in SAP in that case. And that's the end-to-end -end flow again, like I sh showed you the mobile device thing. Uh, the thing to notice here is that we could also use scanners. It's not the end of the world that we don't need scanners, no. Uh, at times, uh, scanners are also recommended because let's say you have 1,000 thousand, thousand delivery tickets, right? And you don't want to take pictures. You just put all of them in, them in one, one stack in the, in the scanner and it scans and goes to Comark. So either is okay, either is, uh, let's say, possible. And the idea only is to convert the paper to PDF and then it goes to Comark here. Comark, Comark is converting the paper to a uh, to a XML file, PDF to XML file, and then the bots, the RPA bots, are picking the XML files and using standard SAP BAPIs to post the tickets to SAP. 
So standard goods receipt is posted to SAP automatically in this case by the bots. So there's no human posting of the GRs anymore. Of course, there could be fallouts, fallbacks in any world. So we are living in a realistic world. There could be failures. In that case, we have exceptions handling queues where some a human user has to go in and, and check, okay, what failed and why it failed and things like that. Yeah. This is uh, the key message. I think you saw that in Rhino's presentation, the extraction, verification, and validation. So like I said earlier, we uh, not only extract the data, we also make sure that we validate and verify that. So the more the green, the better we are here. So the idea here is to automatically grab the data from the image as much as possible. At times, it could happen that there, there is something on the, in, on the document which was handwritten, yeah, which was not so clear. Some guy in the plant used, used a pen and, and wrote something by his pen. Of course, the system will struggle in that case. But then we, our, our purpose is to, let's say, motivate the suppliers to, let's say, uh, uh, educate them so that they send more printed documents and not handwritten documents because eventually it, it impacts our process here, yeah? AP automation is something which many people are aware about. You might have heard of that a lot because it's being talked about. Talked about. It's, it's a buzzword these days, AP automation. And they they actually, we are using Comax and Insider's techniques since a few years already now, and we are reaping the benefits. Again, it was a very manual process where, let's say, invoices were coming in, and it took time to, let's say, scan them, uh, process them in the workflows and so on, right? And what we saw is that if we couple the AP automation with GR automation, goods receipt automation, it really, let's say, shoots up. So it really exponentially gives us benefits. Why? I'll tell you a very small uh, say, uh, thing here, a use case. Let's imagine an invoice came in, yeah? And in th these days, invoices normally come via PDF, yeah? Via email, via EDI. It's real quick. So supply is pressing a button, and the invoice lands in your email box, right? But the goods are on the, still on the trucks, on the ways, on the highways. So invoice is sitting in the workflow, waiting for the GR. We got AP or accounts payable clerks cannot post, post that because GR is missing. And that's how we are getting the benefit here because now since we have the delivery note automation, the GR posting happens a bit earlier. So let's imagine that the goods arrive from the trucks on the third, third day or the fourth day. Even then, uh, it, it could take some time for the manual user to post the GR and then the invoice will be grabbing that goods receipt to post the invoice to SAP. But since now we have the delivery note automation in place, as soon as the GR comes in, it is posted and the invoice can see the GR and go and can, we can go ahead with the posting into SAP. So we have much, res, much less cycle times in this case, much reduced still say human errors, which really impacts the full end-to-end -end process also in AP automation. Because initially we used to have very high cycle times, which is now really, uh, uh, which has come down significantly in the last year. That's actually a summary of uh, why we did this. It's all, let's say, very evident for us actually that okay, it was a very, very manual process, very manual process and very uh, error prone process. And it induced, let's say, time lags between, let's say, when the goods arrived or when the document arrived and when, when it was actually posted to SAP, there was a huge time lag. And because of the time lag of the goods received, there was a time lag on the invoicing as well. And we couldn't claim VAT, VAT in those cases. As in many countries, we need to post the invoice to SAP to claim VAT. And that was a huge win for us in that case. Another thing was non-harmonized non, non processes because I think it's very, very common thing in any big company that we have non-harmonized processes across the countries, across the plants, across small departments, so to say, that people sometimes work in silos and you, you could have a small mini process within that department or mini, within that plant. And that really doesn't help to harmonize the whole process when you speak about P2P yeah, in, in general, about the whole company. And with this process, it was really, let's say, uh, standardized because what, what we saw at times also is that in some plants or in some countries, there was little bureaucracy that, okay, they need some signatures on the paper. And when we did further analysis on why that was needed, that, that there was no clear answer. No, that's just for, let's say, that's because they have been doing it since last 10 years. That was the answer, right? So that was a trigger for our automation that there, there are some things being done which is not really needed. We could really automate that part because there are some rules and wherever, wherever there are rules, that could be automated. So we followed that thumb rule that if something can be defined in a certain rule, why it can't we go for automation? If something is really 
a haywire going here and there, we can't automate that for sure. But if something really follows a rule, we could automate that, yeah? Achievements, I have already mentioned uh, uh, a little of that already earlier, but really it was about, let's say, uh, significantly uh, uh, com coming down on the errors in terms of posting wrong data in SAP, because we, we have to do repostings and reversals of invoices in that case. But now since we have good data, I mean clear data and validated data, because of the field extraction rates, which, really, which is really significant here. I mean, we are not talking about 30, 40%, but 85%. And that's a lot in terms of the volumes we are speaking about. And in terms of, let's say, the number of documents, uh, like, I said, like I said, in Europe alone, it's more than 5 million, which is really huge for us. And uh, for, from our analysis, from our findings after the project, let's say, when we did that, it was really, like you see here on the slide, more than 250,000 working hours will be saved. And that is a real FTE thing to, to ponder about, yeah? So achievements in general are really significant here. And again, it is only possible in our case because we coupled AP automation with GR automation. That was the real key message that we got after we did this project. In terms of benefits, again, harmonized process, scalable solution, you name it, and it's there. Because what normally happens, typically happens, is that we do we implement something and it's not working in UK, it's not working in Poland, it's not working in USA, it's working in this and that, right? And that's what we didn't want. Uh, because we are operating in so many countries that if we do process by process for each country, it will be not, let's say, organized any anymore. So this is the real benefit, again, that we have a scalable solution and increased speed also, of course, because GRs are posted in real time, invoice cycle time has, has been reduced. So we are really uh, talking about speed here, not no more about uh, increased cycle time of the invoices or the GRs. And this is mostly, mostly let's say, summarizing uh, all the benefits I already spoke about. But one thing I like to highlight is, let's say, the centralization of the SSCs. So uh, like I showed you earlier in one of my slides, that's what, what happens if something fails, right? It's not, it's not a happy world. It's not a perfect world. There could be cases where uh, data will be wrong, yeah, or something is not working. So in that case, who is responsible for that? Is it still the plants or the local users? In our case, no. So what we did is that uh, once the picture was taken from the user in the plant, it went to, let's say, Comark. Comark uh, saw something. Something was wrong in the PO number. PO number was 452 and not 450, something like that, yeah? And then in that case, it goes to SSC. Our, so our central shared service center in UK, it goes there. And the, the verifiers, the people who verify invoices also verify delivery, de delivery documents there, the same people, because they have no know-how. They know how to work in, in the system, in the verifier, in the smart fix verifier. So they verify the documents for both delivery notes and invoices. And for them, it's very easy because in this case, we have less number of fields in, in comparison of invoices because we don't talk about amounts and things. We just talk about, talk about quantity, supplier, plants in this case. And then they are responsible to check the data and correct that. For example, if the quantity was five and the user in the plant cut that five and put six by his pen, then this user in the, in the SSC, this verifier, will, will type in six manually. So our target is, is to reduce that thing more and more and lose, meaning that the data should be automatically grabbed as much as possible. Of course, there will be errors in that case. We don't go back to plants. In this case, we rely on the central service center because we are not going for local. We are going for central in this case. And that's also a huge benefit uh, we are talking about here in terms of uh, shifting or, let's say, reducing work plus uh, moving that from the local plants to a central hub uh, in a shared service center, yeah? Challenges, well, it, it happens always and it, it will happen in, in any project. Well, in our case as well, it was too much of a change management. Not It's, it's, not, it's not like we thought about that and we got that. We had to uh, talk to purchasing, we had to talk to finance guys, because it's always a, a combination of these two departments, typically, if we talk about invoicing or GRs. But the first thing and the foremost thing that we learned and we knew is that we have to talk about the process first and tool second. If we, if we select a tool already and we, our process is not in place, we will not be able to have reap the success in that case. Because in our case, initially, the process was itself faulty. So the process was not streamlined. It was, let's say, uh, uh, working in silos. And if you implement a tool for that process, 
I mean, nothing will be benefited in that case because you still have the same process in, in, the, in the background. So that is where uh, we really had to invest time. A very small example. I think we, have, we, have, we might have a few minutes. I will give you a very quick example. So let's say you have an invoice coming in from a supplier, but the PO, num PO number is not there. The vendor is missing in your master data. So master data is really the key here. So we need to make sure that the master data is cleansed regularly and that is in place before we go with these tools or AI methodologies or R RPA things because RPA, OCR, AI w won't work with a bad process or a, let's say a, 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 a dirty master data if I can use that word. So we have to make sure that the master data is really clean before we implement any AI, RPA or OCR tool. So that will be it more or less from my side and I'll now maybe hand over to Sally or maybe we can go to questions then. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so to the audience, it's question time now. Um, please pop your questions into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and we'll get through as many as possible. And while we do that, I just wanted to remind you all about that resource centre that you have on the right-hand side, where there's some really nice resources um, if you want to download and have a look at them after the session. And um, we have that BASF uh, case study on there, or AP automation. And um, we also have... Um, the CoMarch EDI presentation, a sheet on master data management best practices, and of course, slides for this session. Um, so please make the most of those. So let's launch first straight into our first question. And it's directed actually at you, Anand. Um, so Ryan has been asking, he says, many companies market AI and automation. However, once a product's been sold, the AI automation levels are never at the level promised. Um, have you experienced this um, and maybe you know, go back to kind of how do you get the ROI that's promised um, when you're implementing this kind of solution? That's a very good question because that is something which anybody will encounter as soon as you start a, a similar project. Like I said in my last statement, when we began and we knew that our master data was not in the right shape. And the first country that we began this with this part, we were actually not, not so prompt and we started the process to implement the tool. And the recognition rate was very, very low. It was close to 40 or 45%, right? And that was not what we wanted. And like I showed to you earlier, we are not talking about extraction. We are talking about verification and validation as well. So if we are just extracting the data, let's say we have a PO number on this on the image, we, you extract that, but you don't validate that, it will, it will be wrong PO number and that will go to your downstream systems and it will be wrongly, let's say, posted maybe to SAP also. So the key here is to send the right master data to, in this case, OCR system or EDI systems, and then they try to validate that right data that you sent already from SAP and then compare that and only send the right data back to your SAP systems. Otherwise, it will be wrong. So that for, in our case, what we did is that we really made sure that master data is, is clean as much as possible. So the, the vendor master data, especially vendor master data, because we talk about suppliers here, and supplier master data is the key, okay, supplier number, because at times we saw that uh, search term in SAP, many people will know there's a field called search term, and it's a mandatory field. And people used to put a dot there because it's a mandatory field. You can enter Mickey Mouse there because it's a, no, there's no che check in place. So we did some, implemented some checks so that the fields which are really needed by OCR have, has good data and have meaningful data. Yeah, so we don't have garbage there sitting in SAP. Yeah, understand. Um, another question that's come through, and I think I'll direct this to you, Ray Reina, if that's okay. Um, it's come through and it says, does your product for invoice recognition also support e-invoicing formats like, and I'm going to get this wrong, sorry, guys, because I'm not in e-invoicing, like Zug, Zug for <laughs> and Echrechnung. Thank you. Um, <laughs> does it support those? Yes. Okay, uh, well, Zugpferd, uh, as people from, from Germany at least know, it's a German kind of e-invoicing standard. Uh, it's a PDF invoice with an embedded XML, just like the X-Rechnung, uh, which uh, has become a new standard, or not so new standard, particularly for public administration. And since we have many customers uh, in these areas, uh, I mean, of course, we are supporting these e-invoicing standards. It's clear that the benefit from our software is not as high when you have embedded XML data already, but nonetheless, I mean, these invoices can be processed, so to say, seamlessly in the same system. 
and all this kind of matching and validation uh, that also Anon talked about, it can be applied to this kind of invoices. So there's still a lot of benefit. Yes. So the, the long answer is yes. <laughs> Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not from Germany and I'm not in invoicing, so I'm sure everyone else knows those companies. <laughs> um, a question that's come through from Christian um, is uh, for Anand, how many invoices need to be manually corrected in your case? Yeah, that's a good one. So uh, in our case, it really depends by countries, but I, I showed that in my presentation, we are talking about 80% uh, automatic ma matching invoices. So we really have to see here that uh, which are uh, PO invoices and which are non-PO invoices. So uh, I think uh, uh, the, the colleague who has asked the question might know that when we have a non-PO invoice, you don't have anything anything to match against. You are just sending a FI invoice, a non-PO invoice, and there the key is to take the supplier, take the amounts and things and move ahead. And when we talk about MM or PO invoices, then you really have a PO behind so Comark has the PO in this case, and then system is trying to pull the PO information and match that with the invoice. And that's where really the key is. So for non-PO, it's really easy for us. But if we talk about PO invoices, we are talking about 70 to 80 percent matching matching rates. So in terms of number of invoices, it, it, it's really hard because we have uh, different numbers by countries. So for example, for, for Germany, we have like uh, 1,000 invoices per, per day in, in, in a very high season, yeah? It's, it, it's close to, nine to one, 900 to 1,000 invoices per day. And we are talking about, let's say, in, in, a, in, a, in a typical day, yeah, it could be anything to 100 to 120 invoices. That, that could be manually verified. Others will go in the background, meaning that people will not see the invoice. It will go in the background to SAP. Understand. Um, Paula, yeah. let's bring you back into the conversation. Um, we've had a question that's come through about cloud-based solutions that maybe you can answer. Um, how do you see the trend towards cloud-based solutions compared to on-premise? That was well, a question uh, from Paul. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a really cool. complicated question. I think we can answer it together. Um, I, of course, there's a trend towards cloud technology and using also software as a service or OCR as a service. Um, essentially, you can uh, save, you know, costs, a lot of hidden costs for hosting, uh, people who need to do the verifying, and um, therefore it's oftentimes a lot cheaper to outsource uh, this whole OCR process. Uh, additionally, Additionally, um, I've heard this argument many times that uh, using a software company like Koma, we're not an HR company, we're an IT company, and we don't want to employ uh, 100 people who are only checking invoices every day. So we are, it's in our best interest uh, to increase the automation rate as much as possible. There are some, some companies prefer on-premises solution, and um, that has something to do. Sometimes with uh, special legal requirements in the energy sector or uh, when it comes to banks, financial industry. Um, uh, usually it also has something to do with confidentiality or the company already has a huge um, data center which they are operating and so it wouldn't be uh, much to add another component there. I understand. Is there anything you would add to that, Reina? No, not very much. I mean, what we are seeing at Insiders Technologies, uh, I mean, there is certainly an increasing trend towards uh, cloud-based uh, services for document recognition and, and similar functionalities. Almost all customers we are talking to right now, and that's what our partners also tell us, they are at least asking for a cloud-based offering in order to compare. And I mean, as you all know, and also the audience knows, uh, particularly in Germany, uh, the cloud acceptance has been rather moderate the last years. And when you're looking at other countries, uh, um, Anglo-American and, and so on, I mean, uh, they are much, much far ahead, so to say, and that's what we're expecting too, right? But uh, Comark and we, I mean, we can offer both. And I mean, we are happy when a customer decides for a solution by Comark and Insiders, and whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, I mean, well, Unless it's a happy customer <laughs> of ours, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Um, 
Ananda, questions come through for you um, from Shakar. Um, and he's asking, he says, thank you for the presentation, which is nice. Um, he says the good receipts process has three steps still. So the first is an inspection check. Second is receiving into the ERP. And the third is the assignment to the bin location. The mobile scanning um, was performed at the second stage of the GR. Was there a frustration with the users of still using multiple systems? Does that make sense? Yeah, so uh, I mean, I didn't get the first part, but what, what's happening is that, yes, that's right. The, the point there, Shaker, right? And the, the yeah. first part is, of course, for the, for the user to scan that part so that that chunk is gone. And same part is done by the, the, by the bot, the RPA bot we have implemented. So the bots are picking these XML files, and those XML files has all the data, the quantity, the PO number, supplier, and uh, material group, for example. And that XML is posted via standard SAP BAPIs. We have SAP BAPIs available to SAP directly. So that's what is done in the, in the second part of the process, yeah? So if that answers the question. Yeah, I think so. Let us know if you have any further questions, Shikha. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. And last, last but not least, um, I think we've just got time for one more question, which I'll direct to uh, Reina. Um, so with Heidelberg Cement today and um, BASF um, and Dr. Utka that we heard from in other SSON conferences, We've seen examples of pretty large customers in the industry. Um, is this your main focus or are your products also suitable for smaller companies? Uh, yes, uh, now I start with a simple answer. I mean, we are here at an SSON conference, right? So it's mainly an audience uh, of larger companies with shared service centers. But uh, I mean, our software is also used by small and medium sized enterprises. I mean, we have companies that are processing whatever 50 documents per day and we have companies i mean not in purchase to pay they're processing half a million documents per day these are the large banks or insurance companies right so it's available for everybody any company on any size brilliant so come on come all <laughs> we want to hear from you um I could talk to you all day, but sadly, that's all we've got time for. So thank you so much for taking the time to put together your presentation and deliver it today. Um, I think the audience found it really useful. Um, you also have the LinkedIn's of the, the speakers on the right-hand side if you want to get in touch with them further. Um, so yeah, please do um, ask questions and continue the conversation about um, the AP automation. We are going to take a short break right now. You can grab, and grab a coffee or a tea if you're English like me. Um, and join me again in 15 minutes at 3 p.m. CET. Um, and we're hearing from Linda Group. Um, so we're going to be hearing about implementing self-service and solving the talent equation with conversational AI. And that's with Dr. Robert Leaglen. He's the Executive Director for Global HR IT Services and Analytics at Linda. I will see you back here at 3 p.m.